Well, welcome everyone. Uh, howdy. Uh, so this is our last lecture in phase one, um, after which we're going to take a break, collect your feedback on Campus Wire, and then plan a short phase two if you are interested in that. So in today's lecture, we're going to wrap up the foundational course by teaching you how to operate with files. So far, we have been working with user input or displaying the outputs on the interpreter or on the console screen that you have. But in day-to-day -day lives, what we have is we already have a bunch of files with us locally on our computer or somewhere on the cloud, right? And you want to still work with those files and in a way, collect a lot of data and process those data, right? So in this, this topic would set you up on how to access these files, how to read those files. How, reading the files means basically how do you open the file, collect the data, bring it to your code, do some manipulation, and then write it back to a new file or write it on the same file, right? So broadly the agenda uh, so again I, first of all i need to thank my crew uh, so they have been very patient chinmay graduated yesterday under these conditions so a uh, great congratulations to him right and everyone has helped me a lot in order in order to run this course you don't probably know what everybody is contributing to but i will take this time to actually thank them to make this possible so file IO is today's uh, topic. The agenda would be, we'll briefly talk about files. What are the files and why do we no need those? And we'll talk about different ways in which we can open the file, right? You can open the file in a different way, whether you want to read the file or do you want to write into the file or do you want to append in the file? That appending means you already have content. You want to add more content or append to the file, right? We'll talk about uh, closing and deleting the files as well. Like how do you close the file? If you want to delete a file, how can you delete it from the program, right? Uh, and then there's some um, advanced concepts uh, which we're going to go over specifically to do with running Python scripts offline, right? So that's why we have that set up so that it's easier for us to explain rather than going to collab and maintaining those files on collab. Even though we have the collabs ready, you can always go and try those out. And we'll finally wrap this up with something called as main function. If you're coming from C++, Java, or other programming background, we use main a lot. But in Python, we have not used main. But actually, we don't need to use main. But there's a way you can organize your code through a main function. And then we'll see how it goes around it. So files, right? So as I told you that we need to have a kind of a way to read or write data from files. And files are basically, as you know, are your day-to-day -day files. It can be a text file, CSV file, image file, sound files, doc files, PDF, DAT files, right? So in this course, uh, we are talking about text files uh, where we can read and write. But then there are other libraries which help you manipulate with image, sound, or CSV files, right? So phase two probably would be about NumPy and Pandas, where we will work a lot on Excel or CSV files. But that depends on your interest and the feedback that we get. So for this course, we are working with these text files, which are like plain text files, which have an extension TXT. So any file name .txt, right? And so far, as I said, we have been using this input and print functions, where input means you're asking the user from the console. So we call it as a console, the interpreter, where you can take in the value, print out the value, right? So we call it as console window. So you can input and print on the console, but how would we do, uh, how would we work on a program if we have to read and write from a proper file, which is stored locally in your computer, right? So the basic idea of working with files is, if you don't have a file, you create a file, right? But if you already have a file, then you open it, 
right? So you create a file or you don't create a file depending if it exists or not, but then you open a file, you work on that file using your Python code or any program. And then you finally, once your job is done in your Python code, you should always close the file. And then if need arises, you create a new file or open the same file and do some more manipulations. So that is the workflow. So every time you open a file, at the end of the program, make sure that you are closing the file as well. Okay, otherwise these files would be kept open and uh, it's not a good practice to do that, right? So every opening of file should have a closing of file and all these are Python commands. So let's see file handling in Python, right? And as I mentioned, we'll be working with text files, which is .txt. So how do we open a file? So there's a command in Python, which is uh, given here, where we have a file object. Now this file object, if it helps you to understand, think of it simply as a variable, even though it's a wrong choice of word to use variable, because in Python, everything is an object. So it's called a file object. For all matters and purposes, you can write it as F equals to, or whatever name equals to. Then the syntax talks about creating a using an inbuilt function called open. So open is an inbuilt function in Python, which takes two parameters. Now that you have gone over lecture five, now it should be easy to understand all these syntaxes. So you have a function inbuilt, which is open. The first is the file name, which is a string. So this is basically a string where you give the file name in double quotations, right? So if your Python code is in the same location as your file that you want to work with, then you can directly give the name of the string. But in case your Python code is not in the same folder or directory as the file you want to work on. So you have to give the path to that file. So it can be C colon users colon, colon C users slash document slash some file dot txt. So you have to give a path. So that's why I ensured that when we set it up, our Python codes and files are in the same folder so that we can simply give the name of the file in quotations. This access mode is again, there are different options for this, which are given by the Python program, where you talk about how do you want to open this file? In what mode do you want to open this file? Do you want to open this file in read only mode? Or do you want to open this file in write only mode? Or is there there's an option of opening a file in append mode? On, and there are other options where you can both read and write at the same time, right? So this is a syntax. So let's look at different access modes. So I'm going to take a bit time here and please ask questions because this, in my opinion, this bunch of top uh, subtopics in this lecture are kind of not easy to grasp firsthand. So feel free to just unmute, interrupt me and ask questions. And you won't believe your questions would basically help everybody else as well. So the first mode we are going to talk about is R. That means if you're writing this code, you can just simply do comma R, right? So what does R mean? R means read mode, right? What it means is if you give a file name, it opens the existing file in read only mode, right? That means file needs to exist a priori in order to use read mode. And when you suppose the file exists in read mode, and when you open that file, there's something called as file pointer. Just remember that, uh, recall that I talked about the cashier example, right? In iterator, where a cashier keeps track of where you are in that given sequence. Think of file, file pointer as the, it's a kind of an indication where you are in the file. So file is generally read line by line, right? So if so by default, when you open a file in read mode, the file pointer is at the very first line in the file by default. So it's at the beginning of the file. Then W stands for write mode. It basically has two purposes. If your file does not exist, then by using W on some file name, 
if you if the if code finds out that there is no file with that file name it will create a new file with that file name but if there was a file already existing and you open it in w mode and so be careful with that it would simply truncate that file and create a new file so we we'll lose all the content right so uh, so it opens an existing file in write only mode and overwrites it so just be careful when you are doing w right if there is no file with that file name that's the best scenario it would open a blank file and would be ready to write on it and the pointer would be at the beginning as well but if there is an existing file it would be unfortunately overwritten and it would open it right there is a another mode which is called as a which is append so this is a kind of an easy way of writing where if there is an existing file it opens an existing file and the pointer is now at the end of the file because append means you are adding content to existing file content so here probably you would want to open a file in append mode if you want to add new content to the file there is a fourth mode called as x which exists in python 3 and it basically means exclusive creation right that means the way it is different from w now you have to compare x and w right w basically meant if you do not have a file with that file name i would create a new file and open it for you x would throw you an error if the file already exists so x is like if you do not have a file and you want to open it then probably use x so that it exclusively creates a file if it does not exist so in w you have a chance of losing the file if it already existed because it would overwrite it in x it is a safe way of opening the file in write mode so x is only writable right if you use x now if you see all other if you see this plus notation be it x plus or r or w or a plus so this basically means i you can use r plus w plus a plus so don't worry about these slashes and these angular brackets so what this means is adding a plus will enable a dual mode which means it can both read and write the file right otherwise if you choose one of these three it can only do one of these operations at a given point of time uh, does that mode override the other ones like uh, the case for write and and read so this is you have to use only one of these modes right while using this so if you're using r plus it basically means read the open the file in both read and write mode similarly with w plus but if you make any changes, does the same overwriting happen in those? Just like the one you mentioned at the top, that if you write, then it overwrites it. Right. So, I, I, yeah. so, so you're saying, talking about W plus or R plus? Yeah, R plus. So R plus is read only, right? So it will read, it, it will, R means read only, R plus would open it for read, and then you can write it onto that. So it's fine. R plus is safe. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Because deletion never happens with R. It's the W which is the critical part here, right? Okay. Uh, and we'll see some examples as well. Okay. So uh, now you, the fifth mode or the sixth mode is you can use either R W A and then add another term B, which basically stands for binary format. Because when you are doing these text files you would probably read it through english characters but sometimes you probably want to read a file in a binary mode that means even if it's a text file all the text ascii characters like they would be converted to the equivalent binary sequence and then you do file operations or any coding on the binary form of that file right so in that case if you want to open a file in binary mode you add an extra term which is b after rwa and if you do b plus it's like binary mode both read and write 
So look at some uh, examples here. So F is my file object and I'm giving a file name called as work file, right? So in this case, I've not given an extension. So uh, probably let's try to this example, right? So let's try to do F equals to open work file W, right? So I'm going to do F equal to open and you can try it along with me. So, work file dot w save it so open work file you can do double quotes single quotes and this these are also in quotes uh w right so so let's try to run it okay now if you see here in your the same folder where you are you have this sample dot pi there's a work file now created, right? If you open this work file, it is basically blank. It's in write mode, right? Uh, now, now let's try to write something inside this, right? And let's save it, right? And now, Okay, let me just close it again, uh, run, okay. So my file internally has closed for the program. So let me now try to open it again. So I'm going to, so now see that your file already exists and I'm doing this W, right? And we already had a text Oh, it did not, did I run this already? No, let, let me. You save it. Okay, it's saved, right? And now let's try to run it. Okay, there you go we lost the content of Howdy because you opened it in W, right? Now let's try to open this in append mode, right? So let me close this again so that I can open it. So every time you open a file, you have to close it. So I'm going to do, so let's check the content again. It has Howdy, right? Now I'm going to open this in append mode. Right, and then I'm going to run, run it. Well, did I already? Uh, JD comment out the open with W's uh, so you're not performing that function. Oh my God, that's the whole issue. Thank you, thank you. I have to just check once, right? So, okay, let me just create something here. Okay, howdy. Suppose I have this file already with me and now let me just delete everything here, right? So I need to now open this file fresh in, so let me just again check, do I have howdy? Yes, I have. Now I'm trying to check it using this file, right? So run, run module. Okay. See, I don't lose the content now, right? So it's ready to be written into, all right? So these were some of the tricks that you can use and you can just see how append is different from W, right? And reading file is only uh, makes sense if you are doing some operations, which we, we will have examples later on. Okay, so this is a small detour on how you would want to make it work on Collab. Now on Collab, you would see that uh, we would have an option of mount drive on the left panel. So when we do mount drive, what would happen is uh, you would be able to go to this, there would be a code that you have to run. So if you have Collab 
file with you. Uh, what we can do is we can go to this one, which is uh, L6 slide examples, open with Google Colab. Okay, if you're still searching for this, let me again give it in the chat. Okay, so in that case, open this L6 slide examples, right? And here, uh, what you would see is you have this code that Wasim has already given, right? So, so, so when you so let let us just clear this up uh, with clear all outputs, right? Runtime factory reset runtime. Okay, so it's clean now. So once you do this let me open it in playground mode so that doesn't change your code right so now once you have that have this right click this one and keep an eye on this file tab here right so now enter authorization code by going to this link so you go to this link you open any Google account profile, you would act, allow, and then there is this link, right? Copy, go back, paste, enter. Okay, so your content slash content slash drive is uh mounted so what you can do here is you can click this there is your content drive so everything that you now do in this drive or store in this drive you can easily bring this into your collab file and work with those files that's what you are you have imported right you have mounted this drive so all this is an alternate way if you want to play with an online tool like collab and then bring in files from your google drive which are stored inside content drive. Or you can give any, uh, yeah, I think you can do this and then do any part in this drive. So this is like my drive where all my content from my Google Drive are. So it would be same in your case. So that was a little detour on how to work if you're working on Collab or an online uh, tool. So, but now we have already set ourselves with a local idle environment. So we'll play around in that, right? So these are the, things that we already did right now let's talk about some examples right so whichever examples we have here i'm going to work with those examples on the local idle environment right so first of all we're trying to understand this from the slides and then we'll go and practice there now this is an example where now for this matter this assume that we were working on this collab and this is the path so i'm opening a file object called as my file and then my file is the object that you have and you're opening this file location in a read mode now that would assume that your new file.txt already exists right so let me go back here and I think there is slide example. Can I open it with, oh, no, I need to. Okay, let me go back to this collab. And then just simply copy paste this here in our sample that we are maintaining locally. So now let's try to work with new file. If you see your locally, you should have already downloaded and saved your new file.txt. So I'm going to remove this path, which was for drive, because I don't have to give that path any longer. And now uh, just try to see what we're trying to do. So you can peep into new file and you will see that we already had some examples where we have filled this new file with these lines. Now, what we're trying to do now is we're going to try to run this script, right? And let's look into what we are trying to get at. 
So we're going to open this my file in read mode. That means if it exists, open it in read mode, the file pointer would be at the beginning of the file, right? And then there are different object attributes which you can use on my file. If you do my file dot name, it should print the name of the file. If you do my file dot closed, it will give you the status of the file. Is it currently open or closed? True or false? And my file dot mode would give you if it is in what access mode. So I'm going to run this module. And you can see here the output. So, so print works on the console, right? You can see here that the print statements work on the console. So name of the file is new file dot text. Is it closed? False. Why? Because it's open right now. And the opening mode is R, right? So those are some of the properties of file objects which you can use. Okay, any questions? Just unmute and let me know. Okay, great. Uh, so, so let's talk about this part, right? Now, it's a good practice that after you have done with operating on the file, on your code, you need to always close it. So I'm going to do file close. So just like we have a file object, we are going to use that to close. And I think we have already seen an example of it, right? And then I'm going to print the status just to know if it's closed or not, right? And our hunch is that after this statement, it would close and this should be true, right? So let's run it again. It will run, right? So the first three are virtue of these print statements. Then we close the file and we can check the status. Is it closed? Now it's true, right? So that's how you want to open and close a file. Any questions so far? If not, uh, let's get uh, let's move to the next part, which is the interesting part of if you already have a file and you're opening it in a read mode, right? So. If you're working on a code, right? If you're working on this program, now what you want to do is, so I am opening this file in read mode, right? Open a file. Now I want to peep into the contents of the file without even actually going into this local folder and doing a double click, because that's how we usually do. But in programming, what you can do is, since you are already with working on a window like this and a console, there is a way you can print the contents of the file and look into it, right? So what we are going to do here is, if you see the statement here, my file dot read, right? So I can do my file dot read. Now, what would this do is it would read the entire contents of the file all at once. But it's not going to help you right now because there's no way of looking into the file. So the way I can look into the file using my code is, let's try to print what my field dot read gives me as the output, right? So now if I run this, you can see that it starts giving me an output on the console by virtue of this print, and it has actually read my entire file. So if you open this new file, it has actually read all these five lines and that's what you have, right? Now there's one critical element that I want to show you here because it's coming up here, is the fact that there is this extra line which comes up here, right? This extra line comes up here. So just keep an eye that there is an extra new line which keeps hanging around. So we'll come back to it again, right? So if you notice here, right, this next line, now remember that this is only one print statement. And if you recall, one print statement has a default new line at which it ends, right? Because if you do print my variable, then it prints my variable. And then by default, the END, the end field in print is new line. This extra line that you are getting here is because of that. 
whereas the actual contents of the file is just read as one string because for read and we'll see it next for read what is happening is it opens this file it reads all this as one single string so the way it is organized there was an enter or a carriage return after one right you can see there is one carriage return after one. so while creating this file we already have a new line character already incorporated in the file so this organization of this is line one two three four five is because of the new line which is already a part of this file while creating it whereas this extra new line that you see here is by virtue of this print right so let's try to do this right let's try to uh run this again right now i'm going to remove this new line right so i'm going to remove this new line and i'm going to run this module right now you can see that there is no new line because i did not end this line five with a default enter if i ended with a default enter and i saved this file okay so let me just close this window and let me just for the sake of it let me just close this close this file okay so there is this new line because i had this new line from by default and the print is also contributing to it right so i hope now i'm removing that new line saving it and now if i close this and then i run it see now there is no extra new line okay just keep an eye on that print by default adds a new line but then how you organize your content inside the line also matters for all purpose what you could have done is if we do like this then there is you're not going to see any issue if your file is like this and you're going to run it it's all in one line right? so that really depends how you have organized your contents of the file okay so i wanted to bring this so that i don't have to revisit this little concept again and again right are there any questions no i don't think we can have multiple files open at once because your file object or uh, mul multiple files i would be curious if we have multiple L let's try this my file two is equal to i think with a different pointer uh do we have another some new file here i think we have work file right we had a work file with us so let's play with that work file uh, okay and then let's print i'm hopeful it might work because i'm using a different oh wait a minute what happened i'm using a different uh file pointer right so my file two let's see and closing is just our virtue right so it's just a good practice my file so after i print the contents so yeah in this case i'm hopeful that it should work so let's get going run oh my file 2 is oh okay e was missing okay let's give it another try let's close it and run fresh there we go right so we have to use another file pointer all right file handles basically means the file objects my file my file too okay i'm not going to look into the chat because i i'm sure my ts are there so if you really want to ask any questions so that i can hear it 
unmute and ask. Okay. So that would save us time from me peeping into the chat again every time. So that's that's about this uh, read business, right? So in Python, end of line character is new line, right? Because that's slash n is something that we denote as new line. Now writing into the file. So we looked into examples of opening the files. Now how do we write into the files? So uh, so what we have to do is just like we have open the file with open function in writing you have to first assume that the file is already opened in a written append x or this mode because all these give you an option of opening the file in some kind of right mode right so once you have opened the file now i want to add contents to the file right so if you see here there are two examples or two ways of writing to the file you can either write one string or you can write a list of strings which would be printed on the which would be saved onto the file as a concatenated string at the current file pointer right and remember that while writing it you have to explicitly mention slash n so that any new content you write moves to the next line automatically right so let's let's look into this example right so uh so suppose uh this one is like we are opening this file which is new file to in write mode right so let's go back here and if you see here you already have a new file too right which already has content right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do that cardinal mistake of opening this file in write mode right so i'm going to do this mistake of opening new file to dot txt in this write mode now slowly should start guessing what the outcome of this would be because it already exists it would try to delete it right and open a new fresh window right so if i have to show you uh let's try to run this right and if i open new file 2 the content has vanished now you can even try deleting this new file 2 let's delete it move to trash it's no issue for this code because if it does not exist, it would create a one. So let's try to run it. See, there's no error and you would see a new file to is newly generated. Now that you have that, so what I want to do is I want to write into this file, right? So I want to write into this, my file. So how do we are almost done with the fundamentals course, right? So I'm going to do this, my file dot write and as mentioned it can it, it takes strings right so it's like how the we are done with the fundamental code okay hopefully i'm using the same oh, we are all we are almost done with the fundamental course okay we're almost done with the fundamental course right after that i'm going to close this file okay good practice every time i have done my task with the file we should close it right and now remember that new file 2 is now being opened in write mode so for this program it would be a blank script if it already existed it would overwrite it and it's a blank script and when you open it in write mode the file pointer is sitting at the very first line in this file internally to this program so what we're going to expect is this string is going to be printed into the first line right and then i'm going to close this so let's try to run this program okay so let's go back and look into our new file too there we go we have it but see that there is no new line character here because now imagine i'm going to write 
another line and you would see what I'm trying to say. This was supposed to be new line because ideally what you think is every time you write onto the file, you're writing into a new line. Now see what's going to happen. If, when I'm going to run this module and if I look into the contents of new file too, see wherever the initial string ended when you do my file dot write it's going to continue from where it left off this is very different from print in print it the new line was inbuilt so if it was print statements it would have printed on the console on two different lines right but in write you have to explicitly mention a new line character so e either you can do slash n after you write every statement or in this case you can even do slash and before it so that after this course is printed you can it move it sees the slash and which is an explicit new line and this would be a new line so my suggestion is do a slash and after every string so that the file pointer is always waiting at the fresh line right so now we are going to close this we're going to run this program again the contents would be overwritten by this right and now if i quietly add a third statement without any fancy terms this is third line now i'm not doing anything fancy here i'm just printing it like this so now you would see that it would automatically get printed in the third line because of the slash and in the preceding statement. So if I run this, go ahead, run. Line scanning, what happened here? String, did I, oh, I messed up with this string character. Now it's a, a complete string, run module. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm okay so new file two there you go and this is third line that is coming because of the previous slash n but now if you add another line it would be right, appended right after this e like if you don't write so safely safe practice do a slash and explicitly every time you write onto the file so any doubts so far on this you have to unmute if you ask me so that that those changes only apply to the file in, it, that you're dealing with at the moment. So if I wanted to access a different file, I have to close everything, or can I uh, somehow? Yeah, if I want to make a change. Uh -huh, go ahead. So I showed that example a few minutes back when Jonathan asked. I think you can do my file open to open another. So it all depends on the file object. So my file is the key. Because my file is now reserved for new file 2.txt. Any operation you do with my file will now manipulate this one. If you want to work with a new file, create a new file object and then open a separate new file. And that okay, so it has to be separate. You can't like write something for one file and then another file. It has to be separated. As long as it is open. After as I long have, as it is open. After I close it, now I can reuse my file to open a new brand new file. Okay, thank you very much. In its current active state, you can only use one. So you can see that close basically terminates that file of operations. So okay. And in at this point, can um you can do like the dual um where you read and write? Yeah, so in this case, new file is to uh, this one, right? So now let's try to open. So now I've closed it, right? So now let's try to open it again. You know, duo mode. Let's say R plus, right? Right. If if I do that, I so it's both on a read and write mode. So in that case, if I open this, and so this is you might assume that oh, this is R plus, so it's read only. But let's say we have we have this privilege now to even write it
right? So now let's see what the impact is, right? So run. Okay, it ran a new. So th this is a new line, right? So what happened was I closed this program. So see what what has happened when this new file dot two dot txt was opened in a written mode. It probably discarded the previous file, added these three lines, and then closed the file. The moment you close the file, the file pointer is reset to the beginning of the line. So now when I open this file again, new file dot two. So the file pointer is sitting at the beginning of the line. Right. And then when you do my file dot write, it goes into the very first statement. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Right. I'm curious to know what happened to my howdy. So I was wondering, JD, because uh, I just did the exact same thing, but mine just appended at the end. But also, can you read something, then write? And Yours you would be appended at the end. Did you close it? Like, yeah, I, I closed it and then I opened it again with that R plus, like you have. Mm -hmm. So R plus is read on read and write, so it opens it in a read and write mode. By default, it goes to the top line because reading means you want to read from top line. So close read line, and this is a new oh. line. Might be so. Maybe this is some because I tried something. I tried to read it first. So I did my file dot read. Um, oh yeah. So see, in this case, I'm kind of use a write command even though I see an R here because it's an R plus. If you do this R here, this would throw an error because you have opened yes. this my file in read, and then you are trying to write it, which is not supported because it's only read only mode. Yeah. So I was wondering if you have it in R plus. Can you read it first and like have it print? Yeah, it's yeah, then, it's fine. Okay. That doesn't make a difference, right? Okay. Read so is read the default nature. It gets an added functionality of even writing it. Right? So I can do read. So I can print. So let's do this, right? I'm going to print out what I have. So I'm going to like delete this file. And let this code open a new file, write these three statements, close that file, and then reuse that my file to open this up, right? So let's try to do it stage by stage, right? Let me just show this so that we f f see the status, right? So now new file two is created with this one, right? And now what I'm trying to do is now I'm going to run it again. So this has done its job. You can, you can even run it all at once without commenting. I just want to show the effect line by line, right? So I'm going to just uncomment these two, right? So now it is read plus mode and we already have some content in this file, right? So I'm going to run this and you print all that. Right, and that extra line is coming because of this slash n, which was there after third line, and it was also a print statement. And now I decide that because it's R plus, I can read and write simultaneously. I'm going to do my file dot write. This is a new line, right? So I'm going to run. So because I already did that, let me comment and let me do these two things, right? My file dot write and Let's do this print again, right? Because it has already, yeah, it has already done that, right? So let's run it. You didn't open the file, JD. Ooh, ooh, I already closed it before opening. Okay. Let's open this file and let's all do all those things. Okay. 
so print my file dot read so how do we almost done this was supposed to be a new line this is a third line my file dot write this is a new line right my file dot write this is a new line no what happened here i read it completely the file pointer okay let me not print read it mm -hmm. okay there you go this is a new line uh read something messed up with uh, how do we are almost done with the fundamental can any tears give me a quick perspective of what happened if i'm trying to read it right when you write it you write it to a new so it, this is clear to me that you open this file so by default it writes into the first line why did it uh, in your previous so, operation what you did was when you read the file it went through all of the file and then the pointer was in the end and then you wrote the new line so that is why you see this is a new line in the end and then in the next operation you're opening the file in write plus mode or read plus mode and then writing this as a new line so this time the pointer is in the beginning so it's writing in the beginning Oh yeah, I understand that. I was worried about this part. Why was it truncating? This one, see that it got truncated, right? Yeah, try to like play with this because I was trying to get this part, right? Okay, let me delete everything that we have regarding this. Open new file, let me remove print. Okay, let's see what happens now. Uh, new file two, I'm working on the new file two. See that this is what I was asking, uh, like what happened here? This is a new line slash and, and it closed. So it's, uh... I understand. I hope everybody understands why this is the first line because it closed when it opened file pointers at the beginning. So is it just yeah. overwriting? That oh, I think so. It's overwriting the point. Oh, yeah, it's overwriting. Let's count the characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. There we go. That's why it's starting from SD. Thank you. Yes, we found it. So it's opening it in the right mode, and then by, because it's in, by default in the first line, the first eighteen characters of this line, which was initially the first, are overwritten with this one. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I hope everybody understood that. If not, let me know. Okay, so this new line, it's going to the next line because of this slash end. Mm -hmm. I, I have a quick question, JD, then. Like, could you, let's say, read a certain number of lines or characters with a read? Yeah, yeah we have slides. We have slides coming up. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. So, yeah, so this is appending now. Please try it on your own. If I keep showing everything, we'll run into three hour mark otherwise. So this is an append mode, uh, right? So, so here, what we're trying to show here is, suppose I'm adding this new line, right? So I have howdy, we are almost done with fundamental course. That was the initial new file too, to start off with. And then I suppose I write, uh, I'm adding a second line here, right? So now you can see that it does not discard the first line because it's an append and read mode. So because it's an append and read, append, first of all, it's an append mode because of A. So you could write a new line, which is I'm adding a second line here after 
after the first line, which was the default line, right? So new file two, I hope you are getting it. Uh, so new file two, suppose let's say we roll it back to this part, right? So what was it? How the, suppose we have this. Howdy, we are almost done with the fundamental course. Right. And now I'm going to remove everything here. I'm going to open this in append mode, right? So if you see this, first of all, let's try to run this pretty quickly and you would see that it's not going to delete it, right? It still exists. And now I'm going to do, because it's now in append plus mode, now, anything I write into this file, it would be written where? After where the first line has ended, right? By default, wherever the line has ended in the first case. So, check. It's e short line, check, right? So now, we do that, new file two. My file, dot right check right so format check no it's not getting updated you gotta close the file jd it said open in the ram the previous one yeah no 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 after writing you gotta close it Oh, okay. So that it gets saved in the disk. What you're writing is currently in the RAM. It's not exactly. In the okay. So yeah, let me just probably tell students then. So when you open it, your file gets taken from this location, gets put into the memory RAM operations. As long as your program is active, the file is in the RAM because it hopes that you can interact with the file. And then every, when you close it, the file gets saved and then gets returned to its original location, right? So probably when I do this, run, run module, uh, new file two. There we go, right? I think we had a lot of check happening because of the number of times this code had to run. Okay, suppose I had this, right? And now if I, discard this and run. Okay, now it's okay. right. So it's this is how you would have expected, right? Because there was a enter already after course in the default file, then I just wrote check. So now the counter is here. Okay, that was an append mode, right? Uh, there's also a way you can use print to write onto the file. The only difference here is instead of doing f dot write, you can do print and then you specify file equal to f, right? So you can try this out. Now, one good thing about this is you don't have to worry about slash and explicitly being mentioned because print would automatically add a new line after printing all these, right? So give it a try uh, whenever you want. Apart from that, there are two other methods which you can work on file object, which is seek and tell. Seek and tell basically, so tell basically means what is the current location of the file pointer, right? Because your file pointer starts from the first line, it goes across every character in that first line, then goes to the new line. So it's reading every character, right? So dot tell basically tells you the current position of this seek pointer. And the seek is basically, is a kind of, it places the file object at some ops offset. Suppose, uh, and the second argument is basically zero, which means default is starting of the file. So it basically means from starting of the file, which is location zero, how many characters you want to offset your file, a file pointer by? That's the offset. Probably I'll show you the example. So this is what I think uh, Jonathan was saying, right? So if you have this my file, which is new file, so I'm giving you a snapshot of how the new file looks like. Suppose it has these five lines, right? And if you do print my file dot read in parenthesis 10, so it's going to only read the first 10 characters starting from the default zero location. 
So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is Lee, right? That gets printed because of this. And because of the print, there is a default slash n on the terminal. And when you do now print my file dot read, now it will start reading from where the file pointer was left at. It was left at this i, right? So it starts reading after i. So n e space one. And then every new line here that you're seeing is by virtue of the new line in the file, not by the print. Because this print is just one print. And the read is going to read everything as one string. So after any, it's going to read everything as one string and display as it is, right? So, so that is understanding this uh, pointer, right? So le let's look at this another example. So suppose I have this new file two, which has these two lines, right? And when you read this file, new file dot read. Now by default, what read does is it reads all these contents of the file in one shot as a single string. So when you do dot read, you would see that the first two lines that gets printed on the terminal are the entire content of new file two. Now the file pointer has already reached end of this file because of the read statement. So if you want to revisit the first character, you have to explicitly mention to reset your file pointer to the zeroth location. That means the starting, right? So reset the seek pointer, offset zero from default zero because seek was offset comma whence, right? So offset is zero because it's a mandatory argument. Whence is optional. So when I say offset as zero, that means from the default zero location, offset it by zero, which means stay at the zero. So it's going to start from H. So if I do print new file dot read 10, it's going to print the first 10 characters starting from H, which is howdy comma space V. So you can see that we have a kind of, so we have this 10, 10 characters. So H O one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So there is this space which comes up in this first line, how D space, comma space, V space. Now, when you ask, tell me where the current, for, current file pointer is, it would give you 10 because it's a location 10. It prints out the current seek pointer, which is sitting at this location 10. Now, when you uh, do another read, now 15 characters at a time. So see your current pointer had already print, already was at space. V space. So it starts printing from A. How many characters? 15. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 till E. So it prints almost space done, are almost space done. These are 15 characters. You again ask where is your current seek pointer or the file pointer? It's at 25th location because it was already at 10. It moved 15 ahead. So it's now at 25th location. Now, if you do another read, now see what was going to happen. It was, it, it had printed up till E. So now if it starts printing, it starts printing with space with, and that's what you have space with, and it prints all the way till the end. Because if you do not mention anything, it's going to print all the way till the, till the end, till here. So it starts with space and prints all the way up till here, right? And then you close the file. Any questions here? It's just to let you uh, know how to manipulate your file pointer to print some dedicated lines or some characters into your file. Right? So you can use seek and tell. Any questions? I'm going to look at the chat if there are any pending questions. Okay. Not. Okay. So. So deleting a file. So you can delete a file either by going into that folder and doing right click or move to trash or delete, or even in Python, you can delete the file by importing OS and doing OS dot remove. So I can quickly show here that what we can do is I'm going to delete this file. So let's quickly do import. So I'm importing a module called OS and then I can do OS dot remove 
it's a function of OS and then pass the file that you want to delete. So let's try to delete this work file. Right, and then run. The work file got deleted, right? So that's how the de deleting files works. So it has to be in the same path as the, or in the same location as your current program. Otherwise you have to give the entire path of the file that you want to delete. Now, another alternate way to open a file is with these statements called as with open, right? So what you can do here is that instead of doing file, f is equal to open file name, you can ev even write a statement like with open as open file name mode as file object, like as f and do bunch of statements while that file is open. So here, one good thing is you don't have to worry about automatically closing the file, right? So in this case, you don't have to worry about that. So for example, uh, did I? Okay, yeah, I went over all these, okay. So opening a file, right? So in this case, we can see an example that suppose we have this new file dot text, right? We have two lines here. Now, another way of opening this is with, with open file name in read mode as my file. So traditionally we, we would have written my file is equal to open this comma R, but now with, we can do this and we can indent and do a bunch of statements within that file. So when I do my file dot read line, so it's going to read just the current line until it, it sees a slash n in the file or a new line character in the file. So read line means read line by line until you see a slash n, which is the terminating character for the line to end. So when I do my file dot read line, it prints how do you are almost done with the fundamental course. And now because there was a slash n after this course, you would see that there is an added space here because of this, because course ends with a slash n. And because of this print, you would see that, you would see that you have moved here, right? So, okay, let me just minimize it so that it doesn't pop up there. So you can see here that this new line that you're seeing here is because of this first print. Okay, that was something that I already showed you before that how it works with a default new line. Now to save yourself the fact that you don't want to add that extra line while printing on the console. Now, what you can do is you can do an operation called dot strip. So every time you read a file as a string, it strips the last trailing slash n. So now what we have done is we're trying to open this file as F. Now I'm trying to run a loop, which is always true. So what this would do, it's going to read line by line. It's going to strip away or strip off the trailing slash N. And until you reach end of the line, because what this means is if you if you are no no more grabbing something into the line that means suppose if you have reached the end of the file right if you have reached the end of the file here after this there is nothing that can be read into the line in that case there is nothing in the line hence it would break from this infinite loop so it would break from this infinite loop and end the program so that this statement basically means read line by line by stripping away the slash n and print that line on the console so if you have this file, it's going to read line by line, strip away the default slash n by virtue of strip. And when it reaches the end of the line, there's nothing to grab, so it would break. Okay. A any questions here on this page? So that's why I try to incorporate strip if you want to just grab the actual data and not the hidden or the trailing slash n character, new line character. Okay, so let's move ahead. 
uh, this is a kind of some kind of extended topic what, what it basically means is uh, in this case we can create a kind of a generator so this is something like in functions we did not include this but then once we introduce here python generators you can combine this with this operation and then you can read very large files so how how it works is now this has nothing to do with files this is just a python generator now ideally what we would have done is we would have discarded this definition we have simply written some for a list which is called a new list we have sim we would have simply written for item in new list print every item right so we would have done that and it would have printed every item one by one another painful and an alternate way of doing the same thing is rather than giving the iterable or a sequence here we call a function which is my generator now what this function definition is it has a new list and for every item in this new list notice that you are not returning i you are returning i you are doing a yielding i so this is the yield operation now what it does is it yields every uh it yields every item here back to this function so that you can print that item one by one right it's another way of doing that but it does not do return i because you need a kind of a sequence here for item in sequence so yield i would return this item as an iterable and then for item in each iterable you are printing it one by one character by character right so it basically means every item here is returned as an iterable and then you are printing every character in that item character by character right so what you have is howdy you have a space then 3.5 because it's running in a loop while it is running it is grabbing hold of this and yielding this value right so how can another example is suppose you have to reverse the string right so what you can do is for character in reverse string hello you can go there and you can write a function here which reverses the string and this for i in range length minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 it's basically saying grab the last character and read from last to first and then you return that each and every character and i'm going to print it so it's another way of doing it's a longer way of doing it but i'll show you the motivation so so what we can do here is we can open very large files with generators because sometimes it's not if your file is very large and i told you that every time we open a file it stores in the ram now if your ram is limited and your files are large right so you don't want to open the file like this which is read lines as list of line and print line suppose this is the original way of doing it so what this would have done is it would have opened f in a read mode read lines basically means read all these lines as a list of lines and now because it's a list you can iterate line by line and print each line now this might fail if your ram size is limited and your file size is huge because you're trying to create a list of a very large file which is memory bound right so what we can do is we can use a kind of a generator like i can show you an example here so what this is doing here is now i'm opening this file as f now instead of doing f dot read lines what i'm going to do here is i'm going to do this read large file f which is basically a generator function so that function is going to break that chunk into chunks and yield line by line so in this case you can see read large file while that function is true while this is true you are going to read now line by line from this file object and when you are reading it from line by line you are returning or yielding the content back here and for line in content we are just printing it line by line right so you can see the type if you print large file it is it will tell you it's a generator object right because you have incorporated an yield so this way you can break the file into chunks and then read it line by line okay 
So this is something we have already done. We have already set it up. So let's talk about uh, this part, right? So I'm going to go back to this code. And which one is this? MyScript.py. Let's open. Uh, do we, oh, okay. So we have to go here. So go to this L6 slides. MyScript.py. So these are the same examples which we have done in the slides. You can play with this. So I'm going to go with. Oh, we don't have. I it. don't have it in there. I directly have it in the files itself, so you can open them up. And... Oh, MyScript.py. We already have it. Oh, that, great. Okay, so I'm going to close my sample. So if you see MyScript.py, now let's try to understand what we are trying to do here. So this is now introducing main. I'm not going to read from the slides right now. I'm going to explain what this is doing. So suppose now we want to write code in a traditional way, which is on a local device, right? I'm not writing it on the cloud. So I would have written everything at once. See, there is no code, cell, text in between. This is just one code, right? So, so, so as I told you before, when we're doing with functions, we define all the functions before we use them. Suppose the way we are organizing this code is uh, we have a calculator function that we have already seen before, right? I'm defining a new function called main. Now this is completely optional. For all purpose and matter, you could have printed these two statements inside this if indented block. But let's say I'm creating a main function, right? And now the purpose of this main function, it is going to print this string and call the calculator function. So this main is going to give a call to calculator so that it can print. And its calculator is not going to return anything because there's no return statement. So I don't need a variable here to do something like this. I can directly do calculator. Indentation is important. Now, if, now see this part. If this is a kind of a variable which is inbuilt in Python. So this is a built in variable which is given by underscore underscore name underscore underscore. Now this built in variable is very special. Why? Because if you're trying to run this code, first of all, I've organized it into functions. Now see what's going to happen. I'm saying that if your inbuilt variable has a name called as underscore underscore main underscore underscore. If this is true, only then run the main function, right? So let's try to run this. Now see why we are getting this output. So first your program goes here. It's a def def, so it's, it reads that and then it goes here where it starts executing. Now, every time you run the script as the main file, because here I, ran the script on my script.py. So when you run any file as the main file, by default, Python would initialize this built-in variable with main. So this is always going to be true for any script that you are running at that time. So because I ran this script right now in front of you, Python automatically understands that the name variable would be main because this is the main file because this is now true run this function main so it goes in here it prints so this is the first line you see print now it gives a call to calculator so it now control goes here this is a calculator it gets printed 20 and 15 and plus now this statement is valid this is valid because of this plus condition so sum is equal, it's going to print sum is equal to 20 plus 15, 35, right? And it's going to end because there is no, so there is no return statement. So it is going to come back to where it was called from. So it returns back here. Now there is nothing after calculator. So this is now going to return from where the main function was called from. So the main has ended, so it's going to return here. Now, since there is no other statement inside if, we end if and we move to the next line in the code, which is this. So when we do this, we would notice that the name variable indeed is main because my script happens to be the default file. I'm running it as a main file. Okay. 
let me know if you have questions here because I cannot proceed until unless you understand why this main gets initialized to name. Questions? Okay. So this is how, if you see some GitHubs and everything of how people create this big, big packages, they would have all these dev, dev, if name equal to main. So I wanted to teach that here while doing files. Any questions so far on how this code is working? So key takeaway is to understand that if a file is being run as a main file, this inbuilt variable is automatically assigned main because I'm running this file. Great, no questions. So let's proceed. So, so this is what was happening, right? So, so I was doing the shortcut of running this from here. You can even run it from terminal, but that's what Vasim has shown here, the example. You're running it from the terminal screen or the command prompt as Python or Python 3 space my script.py. So because this is the main part of the script, this is the main script being run. So the, so the inbuilt of name is automatically assigned to main. So this would always be true if you're running this script as the main file. Now, why main? Because in many programming languages in C++ and Java, main already exists. You can't do, you can't write a program without invoking main because that's how the computer or the program compiler knows that that's where, that's the point of entry of the code, wherever you see main. But in Python, it's not required, right? Now, the reason we have main or define main like this in Python is what if you want to create multiple files or multiple programs in python right not let's say not, let's not say files let's say programs or codes suppose you have multiple python programs or codes and you want to import one code into the other so so far we have seen these import statements so what basically these import statements are is you suppose you create two two programs and you want to bring in the entire functionality of one program into the another program without rewriting it from scratch, right? So I think we have already gone over this. It's implicit, it already assigns to main. So that's where it, the concept of modules come in, right? So suppose you create a program which contains a set of functions that you want to use in your Python code. Now, these set of functions happen to be suppose in program one dot pi, right? Suppose you have program one dot pi, which has all the functionalities or all the definitions, and then you are creating a program two dot pi where you want to use those functionalities of program one. Now, one naive or trivial way is to copy paste the content of program one dot pi and bring it into program two dot pi and then write your own extra lines of code from program 2.py and you can see that that's not a very uh, clean way of doing it of copy pasting because you might want to import three four files right so you want to keep your code concise to what it means for program 2 rather than copy pasting program 1 into program 2 so there is a statement called as import so in this case i have given a scenario where you want to import program 1 into program 2 and then you want to run program two as the main program. That means when you are running a program, you're going to want to run program two dot pi, which internally would have some functionality of program one. Now see what's going to happen. Now both of these program one and program two have their own main function, for example, right? They have their own main function. Now, the name variable is inbuilt by Python. So when program one is being imported to program two and program two is being run as the master or the main main program, then the name variable, then Python understands that program one is no longer the main file because it's not being run directly. It's being run indirectly through program two. So because program one is the imported program, the name variable associated with program one will no longer be main. It would be reinitialized to the actual name of the file, name of the program, which is program one. 
Now, program two happens to be your main program which you are running explicitly as the master file. So the name variable associated with program two is now set to me. Okay. So let me just show you this example of how what, what is being done. So you have this program one, which is my script.py, which you already saw, right? It has its own inbuilt variable name. Now, if you happen to run this file as a standalone file, like I'm doing it here, you will see that this would perform as we expect and the value of name is main because I'm running this as the main file. Now let's say I create a second program, which is my new script.py, right? This is my new script.py. Now see here, it only has three lines. First is import my script. So rather than copy pasting all this here, I'm simply doing import my script. What it means for Python is when it reads, when it goes to import my script, it's going to execute my script completely before it goes to print done importing. And then your my new script can call this calculator function, which was never explicitly mentioned here. But this calculator is being imported from my script because you are importing my script. So all the definitions and all the functionalities are now part of my new script. So you can do my script dot calculator because you imported my script. So you can run calculator, so which is defined for my script, which is this one. So you can do my script dot calculator eight, 10 and plus. Now what we're trying to do here is this is your main file because you're running my new script. Suppose I now run my new script. What would happen? See, let me grab hold of this pointer. Okay. So I'm running this as my main file. So I do run this or I do Python three space my new script dot by I do that. Right. So when I do that, what would happen? Python would first execute this. So it will go to my script. It will read here. Okay. It is definition. This is definition. Then it would come here. So I'm still in line number one, but in line number one, the Python code is actually reading line by line until it reaches here. Now see how we are resolving this conflict. I told you in the previous slide that my script is being imported here. So the name variable associated with my script will no longer be main. It would be renamed to the name of the file, which is my script, right? So this condition will no longer be true in my script. And that's what we wanted because my script is no longer the main program. So my underscore name is automatically assigned to my script. Hence this would fail and you are not going to run this main code. So this main will never be called. So the only statement that gets executed is this one value of built in variable, which is the first line here value of built in variable. Now you can see that the name, which is the local variable here is no longer main. It is the name of the file because it's being imported into this one. Hence, I would see my script. See the difference of this statement and this difference. When it was run as a main file, my name was main. But when it is being run as an imported file, it no longer has main as the built in name. It's by default assigned to the name of this file, which is name of the program, which is my script. So this is the output from this statement one. Then statement three is print done importing. Done importing slash n means new line and the print also adds a new line. So you get a double new line. So this entire thing is vacant. Okay, so you can decide not to do slash n because print would automatically assign a new line. So that is why this new line is coming from because there are two new lines, one from this explicit one and one which is by default by print. So new line, new line two new lines. Now you're calling calculator, which is a part of my script. So when you call this, it would simply assume that this was now available in this code. So eight, 10 plus is eight, 10 plus. This is a calculator. This is a calculator plus is same as plus. It's true. 
sum is equal to 18 and that's how you end it right so when you import a module in my script python would automatically run all the code in my script dot py and the if statement in my in my script dot py does not allow running its main because its name is no longer main so this condition is invalid right so now i am going to rewrite my new script in this way i'm not doing anything fancy what i'm doing is these two lines are the same now i'm introducing the main function for my new script because every 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 program can have its own main function so this def main is the main function for my new script and now i'm doing the same thing if name is equal to main then run this main script which is going to run my script dot calculator so i'm encapsulating the statement for under the main so now see what i'm trying to do when i run this my new script dot py as the main program it runs import my script as i saw before we told you before it gets printed like this it does done importing done importing then it will def main well it's just a definition it's not called in yet so it goes to line number 10 now see my new script happens to be the main program that is running because i'm running this explicitly i'm like i'm using the run on this program so the name the inbuilt variable name of my new script would indeed be main because this is the main program so when you do this it would be true hence main would be called and you would do my script dot calculator so this is a calculator sum equal to 18 gets printed because of this then it gets returned to where it was called from and then that is the last statement in if it goes to the next statement so if i print the local name variable which is associated with this program it is main because this is the main program now understood any questions here so this is useful for those who want to do serious programming and organize multiple files and import one functionality to another right so if you are at a beginner level where you are not thinking of creating python projects with multiple files then probably you don't have to think a lot about it but for those who want to do serious programming organize multiple files so ideally we would create a script which only has definitions and then we create a working script where all the actual program is being done and it imports from here and there right so that's how you want to organize your file and this is some of the rules or guidelines of how to design python like explicit is better than implicit like it's then some rules like how you want to write your program in terms of readability and all those things. And with that, I would like to wrap up this lecture or uh, slides. I would like to thank you for your patience and trusting us to do these topics. Let me know if you have any questions here because next uh, I'm going to go over this uh live programming which is which which is now should be trivial because the difficult part of explaining the files locally was done so these are like reusing some of those examples but yeah there are some inbuilt exercises here to help you out so let me know if you have any questions on slides in online i can't demonstrate the main import so you can reuse some of the codes from Vaseem. So this is my new script.py. You can try running this file and you would understand that we are getting the same outputs as before. Right. So, uh, so this one is uh, straightforward. Uh, if you have this, you can play along with us. So just run the first line as it is, no rocket science, don't ignore everything that is there. It's basically creating a new file to start with, right? So I can see here, if you open this, you would see that a new file retest.txt is created. You double click on this, you would see it appearing on the right hand side panel. So this code basically, Chinmay wrote this script. So basically what happens is this is just creating a starting file 
Now assume that you already have this file. Okay. Now that's where the now the real live coding starts, right? So you want to uh, now so now that there's this read text.txt which is already created, which we're going to reuse later. Now I want to create a new file howdy.txt and open it in write mode. Now let's create this and let's see where this howdy.txt is created. Well, it's created here. So I double click on this and then you would see howdy.txt, right? So open howdy.txt in the write mode, it would have been blank. Then we wrote howdy inside this. Then we opened this up in a read mode now, and then we read this file, or you can do print fp.read and read, and you could read all the contents in one go. Right? You can manipulate this. Right, and let's try to do this. There we go, right? So howdy slash and means new line. Then I wrote a space of so space gigam slash and space Texas a and M. So yeah, you can clean it up. So I just want to uh, show you guys how you can work with this one, right? So you can do this again, probably close it again and open it. Yeah, okay. Now this was a recap of file review mode. Suppose now see there is already a sample data folder here and it already has a readme for how to work with collapse. Let me open this readme MD. It is a markdown language extension. So, so we have this script. So what we're trying to do here is I'm going to open this in a read mode and I'm going to do fp.readline. Now recall that read line basically reads current line until you see until it sees a slash n. Right? So if I do that, that's what you get, right? So if you print it, see this is directory includes a few sample data sets to get you started, and after that, there was a new line. So it prints even the trailing slash n, which was there in the code, right? Now to actually get rid of this slash n, you could do, let's do this. Right, so let me add this code and let me close this fp dot close and read line dot strip. So I'm going to run this so that it closes the file. Right. And then let's do this. Now you don't no longer see slash n because you don't want that new line being stored inside your code because you probably want to work with the text and not the slash n. Right. Now, suppose you want to open this file. It will throw you an error because this file never existed and you're opening it in a read mode, right? So that's why it throws you, throws you an error. Now you're trying to open a non-existing file, right? So, so this will create a new file if it does not exist. So let's see test.txt. There we go. We have test.txt being created, right? And um, there we go. So we have a content inside this, which is we are testing the right functionality. So okay. increase the view here. Okay, right. And since we already have test, I'm going to open it. Now by mistake, I'm going to open it in W. So it's going to overwrite it. So you, when, we, when we do that, close this and Let's see the content so that it refreshes. There we go. It overrode the previous content and now the, this is a new content, another line here, right? And that's what gets printed. If you do a fp dot read after content dot, there was a slash and new line, another line here, and there was no new line after this one. So 
it gets printed as it is. Closing files is what we have already talked about it. So suppose you close the file. Now you can't do a read line because the file point file has been closed and pushed to the disk. So you have to open it again before you can read line. That's the error. Right. So now let's try to run this, which is read test dot text. So let me open read test that we had and it gets printed as it is. So when you see fp dot read, it reads all the contents in one shot. Right. So this is being printed because read would print everything as one string. Now you can print uh, line by line because I have closed it. My file pointer would be reset to the first line. Now let's see what is going to happen. While your read read everything all at once, read line basically means line by line. So I'm opening it again in read mode, but now I'm going to print it line by line. So when I do the first read line, it reads the first line. Now this read line by default has a slash n here. And then the print also adds its slash n. So there are two new lines. So after this, there is one and two. And that's where the next print statement is going to get printed. Now, because of the read line, the file pointer had already moved to the end of this line and it was ready for the second line. Right? So when you do fp.read line, it reads from the current file pointer onwards until it sees another slash n. So, so by default definition of a line means any string of characters until you see a slash n, right? So in this case, it starts from this and it goes until this exclamation mark, which is this one. And again, you see a blank because this is print and also this read line has a slash n. So there are two, there is one and then two. Right. So just be careful on that front, right? So for all purposes, I can now do strip. So that's why it would be very handy to use strip every time so that you can print it the original way. See, now there are no new blank lines coming in between. Now read lines is separate from read line and read. Remember read, read this as one string. Read line reads it string by string, like line by line until you see a slash n. Read lines basically reads all this content as list of lines. So when you run this, right? So can, can I do print? Uh, you're reading it and then you're reading it again from the- Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Let, let's remove this. Yeah. Okay, now, now you get that scene here. Now, read lines is same as read line, but it read all the lines and stores it as a list of strings. So you can see here it's a list and every line is now an element of this list, which is a string, right? And you can do dot strip here then you won't see this slash. Oh, list. Oh, okay, because it's a list. Okay, so you can't do it here. So you have to first read it as a element and then strip it up. Right. So, so this is a list of lines, right? So you have to go now element by element here and strip it off. So this is a small exercise for you guys to try out. Uh, you have read test dot text, right? So we have read test dot text given to you. Now what your job here is to find out number of words in this file. And when we say number of words, it means this is a one word. So words are some are like tokens which are separated by space. So zero col uh, semicolon would be one word slash n should not be counted in because it's not an actual part of this file. So whatever text you see, how many words you are. So suppose I see one, two, three, four words in every line 
and I have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty. So I think the answer should be eighty here. So what you have to do is you have to read this line by line and count number of words. Now there's a hint here that how do you count words? Well, for every string you read, you can split it on the space so that you can find out how many spaces are there in every line. So you can see number of words is equal to one more than number of spaces. So either you can check for a space or you can split it on space so that you have four elements for every line. And then you can multiply it by number of times you are reading it, 80. In this small example, what you have to do is, uh, the user would give you the line index. That means what line index you are. And using that line index, you have to only print that line, right? So if let's say I give you the line index is zero, right? So it will only print this is line zero. If I give you line index 11, that means it should only print this one. That means there has to be a kind of a loop which goes along this line. And whenever your, so number of times you iterate is basically how many lines you have already visited. If your number of iterations is equal to the line index, only then you print that string, right? So in between we have a blank. Now, like these are like some of the ways we want to talk about. If you have read line and read, now see what has read line done. Read line would have read this first line, this two, this double new line, probably you know now why it is happening. And the second read would start from where the file pointer was set after the first read line, which is from here. So it will print everything as one string. So you can see this entire block is now one string, which is of this fp.read. This is like file pointer, right? So you are reading it. So fp.tell, right? When you see fp.tell the current position the file is zero. Then when, once you read one line, if you do fp.tell, then it is 16 and you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it has read 15 and the 16th is the new line, right? So it's current position is at 16. That's what fp.tell is. I think this is like doing multiple times. So you can see here that here, I'm printing this, I'm doing this fp.read line, right? Print first line is zero, this is line zero. After this, this is 16, because that's where the fp.tell would have moved to. And it prints a new line after that, which is line one. Then what we do is 16 plus 16 is 32 after two lines, so fp.l is 32. Now see what I have done. I have reset it back to zero. So now if I do print read line, it is going to print the initial line, which is line zero. So with seek, you can reset the pointer even before closing it. But if you do close, it will by default close it and reset it again. But within the same active, as long as the file is active, you can do seek internally so that it gets reset back to the first line. Now these are some bunch of examples for the, I'm just going to simply run it and see what's going to happen. Write text. There's a new file now. Write text. Okay, that's what gets printed. Testing out writes. Then this is something that we have to see here because I'm writing it. So I'm probably overwriting the file again. Yeah, I overwrote the file. I no longer have this text. I overwrote this, overwrote this file with this. So in write lines, so see there's a difference between write and write lines. Now write lines is same as read lines. It's now writing a string, a list of strings onto the file. So your first is writing line one with a new line. So with a new line, it goes to the next line. And so this slash n does not get printed on the file. The effect of slash n on the actual file is it's a new line, right? And then writing line two, two. That's how it gets printed, right? 
now with statement is a fancy way of doing it so you can see that this is how ideally you would want to work like so here i'm printing it but you can do manipulations on this line by line so you can see here that i'm opening it in a loop and i'm going to print it all all the lines until we get a read so with the read it prints everything until it, end of the line right so in this case i'm going to first write it so open this in a write mode and write this line right so i'm going to write open with text with test text which file is this with test or oh, with test text no this was a file right let's run it Oh, there we go. I opened the wrong file. So created using the with statement that is written onto the file. Now we open this and we read this again. So this same line gets printed on the console. So now here is uh, another exercise where you have to find unique letters in a file. <clears throat> so I have read test. So target here is to go through this file and only print out unique letters in the file right so t h i s l n e 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and an exclamation mark i think these are the only unique characters here so that's what you have to do this one is like counting the number of occurrences of a word so given a word as an input from the user, suppose a user gives input as this, user input is this. So you have to read this file and find out how many occurrences of the word this are there. So this is like 20 times. So you can print, your answer would be that the word this occurs in the file 20 times, right? And the last part here is a small demo of working with files apart from text. So this one is going, don't have to worry about this. This is going to just download some of the files, like image files. So you can see I have downloaded a Google logo file and there's a sound file, which is WAV, right? So using, now working with image files is kind of different. It's not same as text file. So we have to import some packages and then play with that right so you can now open your image file you, you if you are to learn there's a scikit learn and other libraries they they have their own packages but the standalone package is this one right so you can use that with wave you can open a sound file and you can calculate some of the properties of that sound file so if you go to this sound file here which is downloaded right and if you play that file. So this is a sound file that we have. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, while that is going on. So for that sound, what you can do is you can print some properties of that sound. It is framed it. These are like if people are working in audio engineering or something, right? So there are ways you can import files. I think the one of the best things would happen is when you start and know uh, get to know about pandas, which is a package to work with CSV files and data analysis a lot. So you can see I can open a CSV file. This data set is already there in sample data, which is California housing data. So if I do that, data.head shows you the top five rows of that CSV file. So you can visualize this. And that's how Jupyter and Collabs are very useful when you're working with these files because you can run these three lines and see the output before writing more functionalities. Whereas here, there's no way you can write in between and see the output, right? So in this case, if you want to see the top 10 rows, you can write 10 here. There are more properties of pandas we are not exploring right now. We'll see if you want to do the 
phase two on NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. But I think that that is all from our side, uh, and that wraps up our journey on this phase one foundations. And thank you so much again from the entire on behalf of the entire teaching staff uh, to be there to to spend the last three weeks during this quarantine with us. And I hope we hope that you were able to make some progress in your journey in programming and specifically in Python. Or if you have already done some uh, done it before, probably it helps you to revise these concepts. So with that, we are open to take any doubts that you might have. Um, again, we'd like to thank you and stay tuned on Campus Fire. We want to float a assessment course evaluation so that we can hear words of encouragement and any suggestions and feedback that you guys have for us. And that would also help us to bring this to the department that how this three weeks crash course that we as a volunteers did uh, and tried to organize this if it was scalable or something. So your feedback would be highly appreciated. So please take out some time to fill that feedback campus-wide. With that, uh, thank you so much.